Welcome to webinar number five. I'm Dr. Julie Rodman. In this webinar, I will discuss the topic of subretinal and RPE disease. You may recall this slide from previous webinars. On this slide, I've delineated the various parts of the retina and choroid. The orange arrow is pointing to the subretinal space, which is what we will discuss in this video. The first topic that I will address is central serous chorioretinopathy, or CSR. CSR is a disease characterized by the serous detachment of the neurosensory retina over an area of leakage from the choriocapillaris penetrating through the RPE. The OCT will show a large hyporeflective or dark area of serous fluid in between the overlying retina and underlying RPE. The borders of the detachment may be regular, as seen on the right-hand scan, or irregular as seen on the left-hand scan. It is important to remember that with CSR, the leakage occurs above the RPE. This will be important when we discuss differentiating CSR from other entities. Normally, CSR is benign. However, in certain patients, CSR tends to be recurrent, and thus we worry about progressive RPE atrophy, the development of choroidal neovascular membrane, and permanent vision loss. So it's important in these cases when you suspect that a patient may have uh, the development of a choroidal neovascular membrane that you get either fluorescein or osteangiography. Just to emphasize on the left-hand side of the slide, the orange arrow is pointing to the neurosensory retina. The white arrow is pointing to the RPE. Notice that the fluid is above the level of the RPE. The other common entity that I will address in the category of subretinal and RPE disease is pigment epithelial detachment. Retinal PEDs result from a separation between the RPE and Brooks membrane. PEDs can occur in isolation or alongside entities such as CSR and AMD. There are various types of PED, including serous, drusenoid, and vascular. It's important to note, though, that regardless of the classification, each of these entities results in an upward displacement of the RPE. The thing that will vary is what material is inside the PED. This slide shows a serous PED, a large on the left, a, right on the, a small on the right. A serous PED will appear as a distinct circular or oval-like detachment of the RPE. Serous PEDs will be dome-shaped with a well-demarcated border. And the important thing is that you can see that the internal reflectivity is clear. That indicates the serous nature of the detachment. This slide demonstrates a serous PED with an adjacent hyporeflective area of serous fluid in the subretinal space. Whenever you have a pigment epithelial detachment with an adjacent area of serous fluid, you need to rule out the presence of a choroidal neovascular membrane. The OCT on the left is a nice example on this slide of a serous PED alongside a neurosensory detachment. The white arrow is pointing at the serous PED. The orange arrow is pointing at the neurosensory detachment. Note the location of the RPE. In the PED, the RPE is elevated upward with the neurosensory detachment the RPE has stayed in place. On the bottom right, you can see a bilobed serous detachment with exudation in the center. The second type of PED is a drusenoid PED. Drusen reside at the Brooks RPE complex, thus a drusenoid PED is a result of drusen pushing anterior on the RPE resulting in a PED. Drusenoid PEDs appear as well-circumscribed elevations of the RPE that are usually turbid or hazy white in color. They may have irregular borders or they may be well-defined. This slide shows small, medium drusenoid PEDs. Note the hazy color underneath the RPE. This should suggest again that this is not serous in nature, but drusenoid. Again, Note the location and size and the internal reflectivity of the drusenoid or of the PED to help classify it. This slide shows larger PEDs. Note the width and the height differ from the previous slide. 
again, once they get this large, you start to worry about the development of coronal vascular membrane and advanced AMD. The third type of PED is a vascular PED. Vascular PEDs will have heterogeneous reflectivity. In other words, there will be areas that are hyperreflective and areas that are hyporeflective within the PED. This PED shows variable reflectivity, including an area of serous fluid within the PED. Notice that the PED has a notched or irregular border. The irregular PED with adjacent fluid is suggestive of possible occult CNV. Associations include yellow, subretinal, and intraretinal exudate that occur typically at the margin of the PED, subretinal hemorrhages, again, that occur at the margin of the PED, and sub-RPE blood, which appears darker than subretinal blood with a fluid level sign. Again, if you see here areas of serous fluid adjacent to a fibrovascular or any PED, you want to rule out the presence of CNV. Note that the orange arrows are pointing to the RPE and the white arrows are pointing to the adjacent serous fluid. This is another scan of vascular PEDs. Again, note the heterogeneous nature of the internal components or internal material of the PED. <clears throat> you can notice that there is a turbid color here and a clear hyporeflective color here, indicating that there is a serous component and a bloody component to the PED. This last slide shows what we call a serosanguinous RPE detachment associated specifically with polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy. Serosanguinous RPE detachments are composed of serous fluid and blood. If you break down the word, sero means serous, sanguine means blood. So again, it's easy to remember serosanguinous meaning that there are two components to the pigment epithelial detachment. OCT findings typical of polypoidal include multiple large PEDs, as you can see in these images. <clears throat> 